Okay, so once you have the sense of what polynomials are, of course what you want to do is you want to make more. And the way you do that is you take some and you put them together in a little romantic thing, and then boom, they start producing more. So I want to talk about how to combine polynomials. In particular, how to add them, how to subtract them, how to multiply them. Adding and subtracting is exactly probably what you would guess if someone asked you to guess. Multiplying will take a teeny bit of work. Let's just do a quick example of how to add or subtract two polynomials. Suppose I say, uh, let's add 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. And I want to add that polynomial, that's a polynomial in and of itself, to the following polynomial. Let's add it to x squared minus 4x plus 3. How should we add polynomials? Well, the trick is just to combine the terms that are like, combining like terms. And so I think the easiest way to do this, by the way, is just to write the terms down, write the two polynomials down, rather, sort of on top of each other, and you sort of line up all the terms that are alike. And what I mean by like terms, by the way, are all the x's should line up, all the x squares should line up, all the x cubes should line up, and then you just combine them. So for example, the way to think about this, at least the way I think about this, would be to write this out as 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus x. And now I'm going to write the second polynomial down, but I'm going to line up the terms. So I'm not going to write the x squared right here, but instead I'm going to write it right here. So I put in the x squared. See how they line up nicely? And then I have a minus 4x. And since I have no constant term here, I'll just stick this out in the end. And I want to add these two up. And so the idea is to line up the terms that are alike. And by doing this, now just add down. I have three x cubes and no x cubes here. So when I add them up, I get three x cubed. Here I have negative two x squareds. And then I am given an extra x squared. How many do I have? I have only minus one x squared. Here I have an x, and I take away four x's. That leaves me with negative three x's. And then I have just nothing plus three is three. And so I see a final answer of three x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3. That's how easy it is to add. Now, what about subtracting? Exact same thing. Except remember, when you line up the terms, you want to subtract every single term here. So you subtract this with its counterpart, this with its counterpart, this with its counterpart, and this with its counterpart. So subtract all the terms straight down, and you can't help but win. So adding and subtracting, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Multiplying, a big deal. Yeah, multiplying is a big deal because there's so many little teeny things. For example, let's take a look at this one. 2x minus 1, 3x plus 4. Well, one way to do this is the fancy FOIL method. FOIL. FOIL transcends generations. I bet if you ask your elder family members, they will have said, oh yeah, FOIL. F, F, for the FOIL, F stands for the first times the first. The O stands for multiply the outer terms together. The I stands for multiply the inside terms together. And the L stands for multiplying the last two terms together and then adding all that up. That's what FOIL means. Okay, let me do this, problem, let me do this um, multiplication using the FOIL method so you can see it. And then we'll talk about another ways of thinking about it. So the first times the first, that's 2x times 3x. Well, that's going to be 6x. Do you like that? No. Because if I have 2 times 3, it gives me 6. But what's an x times an x? That's an x squared. So in fact, 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Now, my outside terms produce a net gain of plus 4 times 2 is 8x. My inside terms are minus 3x. And the last times the last is a net gain of minus 4. I can combine these two terms together, the inside and the outside terms, and I would just see 6x squared, and I'd see plus 5x minus 4, because 8x minus 3x is 5x. So there's the answer. There's the answer. Neat. OK, so there's the FOIL method. You can use that all you want. Let me just show you that, in fact, what FOILing really is doing is nothing more than the distributive property, to distribute something. Remember what the distributive property says. It says if you have a times b plus c, then I distribute the a across that parentheses to all the terms. And so what does that look like? It looks like ab plus ac. 
Now, if you think in this terms, then you can actually see what's going on here. Instead of thinking about this as 2x minus 1, let's just think about it as a big old A, as a big old blob. So just like put it all together and think of it as just a big old blob. There it is. Bloop, there's a blob. What I have to do now is distribute that blob across. Let's actually do that and see if we get the same answer. In fact, I'm going to try something very fancy here. Watch this. I'm going to actually rip. Ha! OK, we'll use that later. OK, now, if I distribute the blob, what do I see? Well, I see the blob, blob times the 3x plus the blob times the 4. OK, but what was the blob? Well, let me remind you what the blob was. Yep, there it is. So I better write that in. 2x minus 1, that's the blob. OK. You see how I just distributed that across? OK, now what I'm going to do is notice that now, forget about the blob part, this is something multiplying these two things. So I can distribute now this way. And if I do that, what do I see? I see 2x times 3x, which is 6x squared. And this is a minus 3x plus, and then what I have here is 4 times 2x, which is 8x minus 4. And if you combine this, I see 6x squared minus 3x plus 8x is plus 5x and a minus 4. That's what I get with using all this distributive stuff. And notice that is the exact answer we got before. Yep. So in fact, that's why FOIL works. Now you're saying, OK, fine, if FOIL works, then why are you wasting my time? Well, the reason why I'm wasting your well, first of all, I don't think I'm wasting your time. So I disagree with you right there. So we have a problem right there. And we need to negotiate that. But the reason why the understanding this notion of distributing is important is because not all the problems and not all the untangling of factors are as simple as just these two things, two mon uh, binomials multiplied together. In fact, what I'll show you in the next thing is how you can actually multiply very long polynomials together, in which case that distributive property is really going to be the key. So I'll meet you there. <laughs>